In this episode, we are able to make an amazing dive at the Wall of Sharks, find a black pearl and leave the two motors behind because of our dinghy. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat, Tranquility. In the last episode, we faced very strong winds in Rayatea, swam in an aquarium, and set sail to Makamo. Makamo. We are anchored at the south side of the atoll and find ourselves a small private island. Underneath the palm trees we have shade and there is even a rainwater well to rinse our salt gear. Time to play in the water the coming days because there is enough wind and our friends have a lot of toys on board which we can try out. New hobby on this uh, very very nice windy sunny day. We are uh, wing kiting, <laughs> not kite surfing, but with a wing. On a, uh, we're practicing on a pedal board. Maybe we can go on a wing foil board uh, later on. But now uh, Kim is going, and it's uh, hard to get back in the wind. So I'm going to rescue Kim. Trying out wing surfing, it is something new and getting back upwind in waves and current against not my cup of tea. Bart will do that. The spot we have found is amazing and probably and mainly because of the people and the vibe. The kids can play on the beach, Liz enjoys her time with other kids and the parents enjoy the water sports. It feels like we have our own small camp. We can leave our gear for the night and continue the next day. The conditions are perfect and everyone is having fun. We end the day with a sundowner on our own small private beach and head back home for a calm night night of sleep. We really enjoyed Makamo. Um, it was so nice. We anchored on the southwest side of the atoll and um, we had a nice small beach in front of us and there was some uh, fresh rainwater we could use to rinse our gear and um, the children played very nicely on the beach and we could do some water sports so Bart and I both tried uh, using a kite and wing surfing and wing foiling it was really really nice and quiet because we were in the beginning we were only with three boats um, it was just so nice. Bakarava will be way busier because it's more touristic um, and there are more boats as we hear of. We will see, we will go to the South Pass. It's a one night sail, 22 hours and I hope the conditions will be uh, nice.
timed it right. It's uh, low tide or getting to low tide, so we have um, the current with us to get out of the atoll. Three knots. <laughs> and um, yeah, the current is really strong. You can really see it on the, on the waves. What are we doing, Liz? <laughs> the entrances you see all these breaking waves and then you're like oh and once you are in front of the passage it's like oh that's really broad and the breaking waves are not even close it's a very big and busy anchorage so there are a lot of boats and uh, mainly because Fakarafa is known for the wall of sharks Exciting day today. We are going to dive in the South Pass uh, where we snorkeled the other day with uh, Samadhi and uh, now we're going to dive. Um, we can, uh, it's very nice because we can drop Liz um, with Jack on the boat of Samadhi and uh, they're gonna play there together with uh, the dad of Jack and um, so we can dive together. We are really excited because um, we are diving the very famous South Pass of Fakrava. It is famous because it is a um, unique piece of water where the conditions are in this specific order that there is a small pass but with just enough of current going in and out that it's the perfect place for a lot of sharks. So they call it the wall of sharks. There's supposed to be around 700 sharks living there. And um, yeah, we're gonna dive and see this huge amount of sharks. So, <laughs> and on top of it all, it's in a surrounding with the most beautiful reef we have already ever seen uh, snorkeling. So it's uh, gonna be an exciting day. Okay, so the dive is like really, really nice and we do see some sharks, but we were promised a wall of sharks. Where is it?
Wow, 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 this is amazing. We are impressed by these animals. It is overwhelming and a little terrifying maybe. And the final part of the dive most challenging when the current gets us and you whoosh past all the currents and the buoyancy is pretty tough. But one of our best dives. What are your plans for today? Well, uh, next thing on the list, I just came out of a wetsuit from the diving and now I'm back into a wetsuit again because uh, I've got my first kite lesson in about 15 minutes. The one who said you would never kite because... Uh, well, we don't want to have all the <laughs> stuff on board and all the shit because <laughs> we have a tiny boat and we already have like diving gear, snorkeling gear, uh, spear pedal fishing board. gear, pedal board. Uh, so yeah, um, we don't have room for kites and boards. And but everything. if we like it, we make room, right? But if we like it, we have to, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, maybe we settle in a country uh, after this trip where it's uh, also very nice to kite. So. Yeah, and we can maybe buy second hand in Tahiti from cruises to Yeah, from quit. cruises that quit, yeah. Well, uh, first let's see how it goes, because <laughs> probably I'll be in the water for hours dragging behind the kite. Bart rocked his first lesson, a true natural. Are you going to miss us? Going to miss you. Yeah, but you're gonna play on that boat. Right over there. Oh. And what's mommy going to do, Liz? <laughs> what's mommy going to do, Liz? Swimming. Swimming? Come on. Doe me dicht. Kiting, Liz. Liz is going. Mommy is going to kite. Kite surfing. Thank you, Liz. Do you see that, Liz? With the big kites going on the water, aan het vliegeren, met die grote vliegers. Dat gaat papa en mama doen. That might look painful, but it was not. And just because I can say it, it was only my first lesson. So I have some more practicing to do. Okay, Kim, where are we going? To the north side of Fakaraba, to the village. To the village. What have we done here? <laughs> well, kite surfing, yeah. diving. Diving, kite surfing. Wing foiling. Well, you did try it. At an attempt to wind foiling. Now, right here on the uh, Hirifa anchorage is uh, a beautiful anchorage. It's not so good for snorkeling because the water is a bit murky because it's sandy. So that's good holding, anchor holding. But because the motu is very nice with some um, trees on that side, you don't have the heavy winds, um, but there's no trees at all, but a reef and sand. So it's very good for surfing and kite sports. Uh, we did some surfing lessons with this guy, kite surfing lessons, Adrian. Um, it's from the blue catamaran. So if you want to have kite surf lessons on Fakarava, this is the guy you need.
Do you know that sailing? When there is a windward side with land and there is a breeze of 10 knots coming from beam ridge to close hold. That must be the perfect sailing ride. It's just, there is no waves at all. The boat is completely flat. And we have a little angle, but not, ma but not much. And we're moving with five knots. 5.4, it's great. It's great sailing. Can you tell us where we are going? Are going to a pearl farm. A pearl farm, and then you can <laughs> open your own oyster and see if there is a pearl inside. For you. For when you're older. So it's not just a pearl farm that we're going to, because we are on the Tiamotus. And on the Tiamotus, they grow the black pearl. So that's different than the ones you might know. Um, the black pearl is uh, not really dark black. It's in different sides of coloring. So it's from gray silver to bluish uh, black. But uh, yeah, we're gonna see. Uh, we can do a lottery. So it's, uh, you can buy your oyster and then you can open it. Probably you can open it yourself and see what pearl is inside. So it could be a, 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 a class high ranking pearl. And for my or class. A, a very cheap tiny one. <laughs> so yeah, we'll and see. And for me and class. Dan kun je zeggen gewonnen. The tour takes place in a small shed at the end of the pontoon close to a resort. We are talked through the complete production of this black pearl. Because it only grows in Flemish Polynesia. The pearl master cuts a piece of lip out which produces the color he likes. He places the lip back in the stomach of the oyster together with a white round ball. The round ball is made in Japan from a shell of a mussel who lives in Mississippi. So quite a process to get a pearl. During the stop inside the stomach, during all this life, the oyster reproduce the same shell, and we hope with the same color that the graph make inside the shell that mm -hmm. the guy sacrifice. Huh? The ball again for you to shell. One oyster can grow a pearl four times. Which, which one? Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. After all the information, it is time for the lottery. To participate in the lottery, you pay for an oyster and you can pick one yourself. It is a always price principle. So, in the case your oyster is empty, you can get a new one. And now I hear you thinking, yeah, but then you get rubbish pearls. That's not true. In our group, there was one really lucky with a perfectly round pearl, so he got the jackpot. Liz and I also got a really nice one too. It is for us a very special souvenir. We did not share everything with you the last couple of weeks, two weeks I guess. Um, it's, um, in San Blas, remember we had our dinghy that started leaking on a seam and we fixed it but every other five days we needed to put some air in it and it became worse and worse here in the Pacific uh, till the moment that we had to put in air once a day to keep it uh, inflated and we've been patching it up all the time and now we're at the stadium that there's uh, patches on the entire seam all the way around and yesterday 
there was one of the repairs blow out um, so we had a leaky tube again so I fixed it overnight again and today it's been leaking already on two spots so I have to fix that this evening again uh, but this seems to be a continuing story so it's probably gonna mean that we are gonna end our Tuamotu adventure here and when the wind comes we sail to Tahiti and see if we can find another dinghy because this is not working yeah So actually the leakage of, the, of our dinghy is a default uh, from the manufacturer because it's on the cap and the seam. Uh, that's where the leakage originally started and now we patched it up. But you can't actually patch it up because uh, there is too much pressure of the end of the tube on the seam. So what you have fixed, the air that just wants to move out and goes to another part where there is a weak spot and then you patch that one up and and so on and so on and it keeps on going we are leaving the two motors behind yes a little bit earlier than planned but that's all got to do with our uh, leaky dinghy um, so yeah that's um, on one side it's a shame, on the other side it's where, well at least I also um, am looking forward to the Society Islands. So hopefully we have a dinghy soon and uh, we're going to use the dinghy. It's not that we cannot use the dinghy anymore, it's just we have to pump it up every time we're sailing. So that's why... Uh, um, every time we've used it. Uh, sorry, yeah, every time we're using the dinghy we have to pump it up. So, two day trip. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.